Podcast. Mike Staley Podcast. Mike Staley Podcast. Episode 1661. That's right, 1661. And it is the first show of July 2018. And there's somebody that I know who got to see an old DJ. That I have no idea. This is my theory. Mike's Daily Podcast. I have no clue. People get all excited about DJs, and I'm like, what's the point? Mike's Daily Podcast. They're just DJs that talk over the intros of songs, maybe like what I'm doing now. And it's not anything that impresses me anyhow. So why do you get excited about people that talk on the radio? They go, hey, uh, Play the brand new one from the Beach Boys Coming out at number 14 this week It's uh, get around, I get around Yeah, oh boy Mike's Daily Podcast And people go nuts about that That's not what drew me into radio That's not what got me into radio What got me in Mike's Was the Daily Whole Podcast Imagination of it Yeah That you can paint a picture Like right now I'm in a studio with a Hard counter and this cool board that I don't own, and I got headphones on. I got this mic with this fluffy thing on it, and I got a computer in front of me with several squares, and each one has sound effects. Ooh, and I just hit one, and it took 10 seconds for it to go beep. But a door just opened, and someone just walked in, and that's important. Tontaines. Hello, my friends. This is Shelly Stewart, Gift Shop Supervisor. What's in Pornhotanes? That's a good question. What is in Pornhotanes? Who's Julie Rovner? Why is Julie Rovner always on every possible thing I could ever want to know? And she bores the crap out of me. She's from Kaiser Health News. So if you want to keep your Obamacare insurance, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> That's me snoring. Look who else walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman. And this is John Deere, the engineer. We heard you had a good weekend, Mike. Mm -hmm. I did. I went to the fair, even though it was hot as hell, but not as hot as the previous Sunday, Saturday. And they had this wine festival. May we discuss the crazy differences? And here's today's podcast picture. Between wine festivals and beer fests, for example, at a wine festival, you have that spit tank thing that's disgusting because, oh, you got to sip the wine and go (laughs) swish it around your mouth and go, oh, what a fine velvety nose. What a smoky veneer. And then spit it out. That's disgusting. Ew. 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 Uh, frick. Beer? Beer? Nobody spits it out unless they're vomiting. They just drink it. And Mm, beer. And they enjoy it and they drink it. Oh, here's the other big difference. My lovely lady friend, which, by the way, the podcast picture is of my lovely lady friend. Yes. So if you've been wondering what she looks like, it's a very cute picture. We were posing together on the infield. Of the racetrack at the fair. Who was I talking to where I was trying to explain to them? I said, no, the festival is held on the infield of the racetrack at the fair. And they looked at me like I had just spoken Greek and maybe an alien language. Beep, 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 beep. It's as if I said bort. And I did not say bort. But they thought I did. And you know what? You're an idiot. I am. It's very clear. I'm on that round green circle on the inside of the horse track. But that thing. Good God! How is that as difficult as hell to ex- understand? I don't get it. So somehow, that was what I enjoyed explaining. And I have this little. So they brought the winner of the horse race in And they said, uh, horse 
Uh, you know, you just did that race. How was it? And the horse went. <laughs> and the horse. Oh, but the horse went on to say that the horse got a call from the president and the president invited the horse in to to, to the White House to meet him. But all my life, I've heard that decisions are much different when you sit behind the desk in the Oval Office. In other words, when you're president of the United States. And so the president invited him into the White House to meet him as he likes to meet the winners. The winners. I like it. I like what I win. I like what I'm winning. I won. I won. He's a winner. I'm always, I won. I never lose. I won. I always win. I'm a winner. I'm always winning. Winning, 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 winning. 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 You know what else? You're a big winner tonight. You're a big winner. You're always winning. Cause he never loses. He's always winning. He's always got the he's got the he gets to pick the next justice. Oh, he gets the next ne- picks the next judge on the Supreme Court. Oh, he's going to be conservative. Oh, he's going to hate abortion. Oh, he's going to be overturn Roe versus Wade. Oh, oh, I'm always winning, always winning, always winning. So the horse is invited into the White House to meet the president because he's the winning horse. To which the horse said, no, I turned him down. And I asked the horse, why did you turn down the president? <laughs> To which Mike screwed up the punchline. No. To which the horse said, if I wanted to see a horse's ass, I would have come in second place. (laughs) That was the worst rim shot. (laughs) Who recorded that? That is like at minus negative three. What the hell? There, that's much better. (laughs) Julie Rovner. No, Julie Rovner uh, looks as if Something's going bad. Like, okay, she's the health news person. And she's a little on the heavy side. She likes bangs. She wants to basically cover her eyeballs with her hair. She's got the haircut from the super uh, uniform designer woman from The Incredibles. Which I heard The Incredibles 2 is amazing. But what's even more amazing... And, and it's funny and it's it's clever and I, I want to see it. This is like the first Pixar movie I wanted to see other than Coco. I still haven't seen Coco yet, but it's like the first movie I've wanted to see, period, in a while. And I like that creative crap. But The Incredibles opens with this awesome dumpling story about this woman making dumplings and suddenly the little dumpling turns into a little baby and, and she raises the baby dumpling and it's bizarre. My lovely lady friend is telling me this story and I just, this is beautiful and creative and awesome. And so I want to see this very badly is what I'm telling you. And the Incredibles have this woman in it and Julie Robner has her haircut is my point. But I'm on the inside of this horse track uh, with my lovely lady friend. See that at mikesdailypodcast.com where you can also sign up for the email. Let's see if anybody has signed up for the email, shall we? And you can also shop on Amazon through mikesdailypodcast.com. If you do that, one little thing. If you click on the Amazon link through mikesdailypodcast.com, you help out the show. Oh my God, we are up one subscriber. Someone just subscribed to the email. Thank you. Looks like we're up 10 subscribers. Holy crap. That's amazing crap. Is crap a bad word? Did you get crap about saying crap? What's wrong with saying the word crap? It's named after the guy who invented the toilet. Crapper. His last name was Clap on, Clap on, the Crapper. That was his name. And now I'm going to play something that in that is out of context and completely inappropriate. It's a mega backdoor Roth IRA. How inappropriate is that? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe Archer can explain. Phrasing? I know. That's totally what the situation is with that. Phrasing? (sighs) The point is that mikesdailypodcast.com is the website where you can see the lovely podcast picture with the lovely lady friend today. No way. Where you can go and get all the links to all the places you can listen to the show and listen to the one with the wonderful Jarell Namay. 
of the past show where we discussed anime, which I'm still completely perplexed by. I have no idea what it is. He explained it, and I don't know what it is. What in the hell? Huh? You've got to be kidding me. I guess I'm blind. Is you blind? I am. What is the matter with you? I don't understand drawings. Something must be wrong with you. Even though I do drawings. Are you out of your mind? I have wonderful drawings. You can also see at mikesdailypodcast.com. Of all the podcast characters, the the uh, Cafe Anyway characters here at Cafe Anyway. Anyway. The podcast players. Anyway. At Cafe. Anyway. So see that at mikesdailypodcast.com. Ooh, I like the sound effects Mike does on his podcast. It's really cool. <laughs> and they're funny. Very funny. Very funny. Very funny. Very funny. Very funny. Very, very funny. Uh, I better stop that, huh? I'm not going to take this anymore. What do you want me to do? Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Oh, that's not nice. Tacky. Finally, and I'm doing it just like I'm on one of those 1960s radio DJs. Hey, everybody, we got a great sound effect for you today. Oh, I'm bouncing around in the cafe anyway this morning. In cafe anyway. Just the worst. Makes me want to run. <laughs> so that's what I'm done with that old-timey radio, 1960s, 50s. Uh, hello, Vietnam. Crap. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Let's see. Before she ended the 20 year congressional. Co- yeah, she killed Joseph Crowley. He had been in politics for a long time in New York, and now she is. Uh, oh. She was working behind a bar. She had helped launch Flats Fix, a tacos and craft cocktail spot in Manhattan. Manhattan. Do you say that? Are you smitten? Do you like a kitten? Are you going to get miffed in with my continuous... I don't like to talk where I drop vowels, but apparently that's a fun thing to do. So Stephen Colbert had her on. Um, and uh, see, let, so this was a week ago almost where she beat Joe Crowley. And she's 28. That's what we're there. We go. But Colbert pointed out that she's just 28. Joking. When I was 28, I got my first can opener. <laughs> so anyway, I'm so impressed. The video of the commercial she did, the political commercial she did where she was introducing herself is riveting. I was blown away when I watched it. And, and she's beautiful, and they got these great shots of her, and she's, you know, talking about how she's going to, uh, you know, it, she just presented the whole, I am going to be the people's politician, like, we've heard that a gazillion times, but somehow this video just killed it. So whoever made that video really needs the accolades, because that was amazing. So, to wrap up, a heat wave hit. What? Expect a hot July 4th uh, heat wave. It's going to be all across the U.S. as you travel wherever you go, apparently. We had the hot weather at the wine festival, but we were able to get through it. Uh, we didn't spend too much time outside. Just, and we brought... Here's what you do. You get a water bottle, fill it with water, stick it in the fridge... And let it let it chill down for a couple hours. Then take that with you, and it really helps. Stays cold for a long time. You spritz yourself when you're when you're feeling really hot. Helps cool you down. Great idea. More than 113 Americans are under heat warnings or advisories. 113 million stretching from the Mississippi Valley up to Philadelphia, Chicago, heading over to New York, Boston, Baltimore, Washington D.C., and also, uh, let's see. The first heat wave in the U.S., eastern U.S., might bring record hot temperatures to Syracuse, New York, which might top 100 degrees. Oh, yeah, and they got that thing called humidity. Yikes. Not fun. So, to sum up, Alexandria Cortez, and I always forget the middle name. What's the middle name? Ocasio. Ocasio. Like you're saying Acasio. Keyboard, which I love. I love them Casio keyboards. 
Should we wrap up the show yet? Not not yet? Not quite? Okay, give it a couple more. So she's Puerto Rican, and she's 28, and what the hell. So that's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for her, and we need upsets like that. And it's very much like the Tea Party on the Republican side about 10 years ago when it was all going down, when people were on the right all freaking out that they had a black president. And so they're like, we're going to start you know, something that sounds really revolutionary like the Tea Party. Washington's made things worse. We're the Tea Party. We're going to overthrow the president. That's not even funny. Overthrow the king. Because we don't like who got elected. I will welcome ideas from anybody. Oh. It appears that Michael Cohen has broken his silence on Good Morning America. Silence is broken He's got a lot to say He's going to tell you About Donald Trump He's going I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue And shoot somebody And I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible He uh, uh, said that now he puts family and country first His first interview since federal agents Raided his home and hotel room as part of a probe into his personal business dealings. He was asked, by the way, Morning is Broken by Cat Stevens, that beautiful piano, is a Wakeman. Oh, is it Kevin Wakeman? Who? Rick Wake, Rick, Rick Wakeman of Yes. The scene all good people turn their heads each day, so satisfied I'm on my way. Yes, the 70s. 60s, 70s, 80s, still together, prog rock band. Um, that is Rick Wakeman, the keyboard player for that band, is who played the piano on that song way back when. Just so you know. In his first interview since federal agents raided his home and hotel room as part of a probe into his personal business dealings, he was asked what he would do if prosecutors forced him to choose between protecting the president. And protecting his family My wife and my daughter and my son Have my first loyalty and always will Uh, Stepanopoulos said He asked Cohen repeatedly If he was considering cooperating with prosecutors In their probe Cohen responded that if he is charged with anything He would defer to his new lawyer Guy Petrillo For advice Okay Interesting Uh, Looks like Hope Hicks could return to the White House Remember Hope Hicks 29 of Greenwich, Connecticut. And she was the White House Director of Strategic Communications. All right. I know I'm boring you. Am I boring you? There's Northern California wildfires. We had ash falling out of the sky yesterday as I was sipping coffee or a blended mocha with my lovely lady friend yesterday. There's like these little white pieces falling down, which reminded me of... The wonderful Katie Lang Why? Because when I went to the Santa Barbara Bowl To see her perform She opened for Lyle Lovett And they actually did a song together on stage But during her performance The power went out Because the power was sketchy Because of all the wildfires And ashes falling from the sky And she says She walks up to to the front of the stage And the band can't play now because there's no sound And so she sings a cappella, And all the drunk a-holes that are Did I say a-hole? And by a-hole I mean not a b-hole Or c-hole or d-hole But the prime hole These type of holes were going Uh Because they're making a bunch of noise And everybody's shushing the first primary holes To be quiet because Katie Lang is singing and she needs everyone to shut up so that we can hear her sing. And she has a lovely voice, so why not? So we all, and people have paid money to see this concert, so shut up and listen to Katie Lang sing, is what we're saying. The point is that there's this wildfire going on, and it's the Yolo, in Yolo County, because you only live once. And it's grown to, uh, unfortunately, almost 33,000 acres and crossed into neighboring Napa County. So we hope they get the upper hand on that. And a leftist has won in Mexico, Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. He has won the Mexico presidency 
He was elected president of Mexico in a landslide victory after riding a wave of populist anger fueled by rampant corruption and violence. Uh, apparently, in Mexico, our neighbor, that should make Trump so happy. Uh, and in a landslide victory that upended the nation's political establishment and handed him a sweeping mandate to reshape the country. Um, and it's you know that Mexico is Latin America's second largest economy in a prospect that has filled millions of Mexicans with hope and the nation's elite with trepidation. The outcome represents a clear rejection of the status quo in the nation, which for the last quarter century has been defined by a centrist vision and an embrace of globalization that many Mexicans feel has not served them. And this, according to the New York Times, the core promises of Mr. Lopez's Obrador's campaign to end corruption, reduce violence, and address Mexico's endemic poverty were immensely popular with voters, but they come with questions he and his new government may struggle to answer. How will he pay for his ambitious slate of social programs without overspending and harming the economy? And how will he rid the government of bad actors when some of those same people are, were actually part of his campaign? And can he make a dent in the drug war and the violence and all that? As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. So, I had a Taylor Swift dream. I know you're saying, what, Mike? That's inappropriate. No. It was weird. It was like I was at a party that she threw at her house and her parents. But it was like, it wasn't Taylor Swift now. It was Taylor Swift when she, and now this gets creepy When she was younger Like in high school And there's like all these people And we're in her bedroom And there's pink You know Unicorns and crap all around And it's like a little High school kid's bedroom And we're all in there And it's not really a party It's more like just a gathering And there's these And the, the parents are there As I mentioned And they live in this mountain house And we're not in Mountain House, California, but in a mountain house. And you're overlooking the mountains somewhere. I don't know where it was. And then she gets on a subway train, but she's on the outside of the subway train. And the train is moving really fast. And she's like falling off, but she she catches herself. This is the strangest dream, I know. And so we're on this train. train in time and everything turned out fine and the Jonas Brothers were there it was a strange weird Disney-esque not really dream and let's wrap that up because I think I've said too much but next show you possibly hey let me know what your Taylor Swift dream is because we've all dreamt about her I'm sure she's part of the collective unconscious of America so you can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com or call the number 336-MM-DAILY here at Cafe Anyway, 336-MM-DAILY. Anyway. We'd love to hear at Cafe Anyway your stories. 336-MM-DAILY. Anyway. Cafe Anyway. Next show, Benita the Disgruntled Fiddle Player and the Brewmaster. And that was F F F F episode one, 661. 1661. Oh my God, it was a palindrome number. I almost forgot to say it was a palindrome number. Cool. Not an automatopoeia. Palindrome. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.